So to me, if somebody comes to me and says, I have this great idea, I'm going to be like, oh, cool. Let's try that. It's so weird to me that these people can't act like adults and just do this. But we know why. We know why. We know that they're beholden to corporate interests and even people that don't take corporate money, people like AOC, people like the squad that I do believe are good, well-intended people. I do. I really do. And the problem is, even if they're not beholden to those, they obviously seem to be scared of them. And so that is also a situation. And, you know, <clears throat> I will do thank you calls. I'll tell you what, if I get to where I can't do them, I know we we'll have to come up with some sort of system. Like a recording of some kind. Well, we have to come up with some sort of system. But I will tell you that I did. I I also tend to do written notes to people. Like people, if you're a patron on Generational Change, you've gotten a handwritten note for me with a little Lulu sticker. And I, in fact, I just recently made personal artwork for one of our people. I'm just saying. I don't think you're gonna have time to do that. No, that I won't have time to do. But would I promote democracy? Wait, 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 what's star voting multi-member district? Star voting is a different, well, we'll talk oh, about- definitely publicly funded elections. So, That's a no-brainer. So one of the things that we're gonna talk about tomorrow- um, I don't know what those are, but if somebody smart explained it to me and it was something that made logical, reasonable sense, then yes, I would support that. So what you have to, <laughs> what you have to know about tomorrow, uh, we're gonna have two guests tomorrow. We're gonna have a, we're gonna talk about a book, uh, Vulture Capitalism with uh, Grace Blakely from the UK. We're also going to be talking with uh, Not members. Sarah Blakely. Ooh, no. That would be fun. We have two members of uh, Cal uh, Ranked Choice Voting Coalition. <clears throat> and what we're going to talk about with them pertains to what obviously happened the other day, which, of course, Adam Schiff and Steve Garvey. Yeah, that's Steve Garvey from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, all these athletes being such assholes. Uh, Garvey's definitely got an ego the size of California. Jesus. Uh, but here's the thing that many people may not have been aware of, but are gonna be aware of now. So Mr. Schiff's super PAC was juicing Garvey's campaign with millions of dollars, screwing over Katie Porter and Barbara Lee in the process. And while Adam Schiff is all but assured of a US Senate seat come November, there are probably a lot of vulnerable seats in the state of California now, thanks to his selfish reasoning to juice up Garvey's campaign. Why? It's been a very long time since there's been a GOP candidate in the U.S. Senate in the top two going into the general election. And in a year where Trump is going to have a lot more juice to his campaign than Biden will, you're putting a lot of people in down ballot races in California in very, very he dangerous spots. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a they shit. They don't care. Not even a little bit. But the people that are up to snuff about what's really going on and know what Schiff is all about knows that he just screwed the California Democrats in a way that uh, I can't even put into words. To serve himself. And why would he do that? Well, as it turns out, what a surprise. He is beating Steve Garvey by a substantial margin, but he's not beating Katie Porter or Barbara Lee by a substantial margin. As a matter of fact, Katie Porter would be a coin flip with him if it was the general election. And he just couldn't take that chance, even if it meant protecting the down ballot seats. How like how it's not just dishonorable how people fight so filthy. It's so dishonorable, mm -hmm. but it's so like these are it's so beta. It is. <laughs> it's so beta. Like like. It's so, those are the people that used to get shoved in lockers. <laughs> well, he would definitely classify as somebody who, like a lot of other people. <laughs> Not that, that I, am, I I never shoved somebody in a locker. But that's the difference between somebody like Jen and somebody like Adam. You see, he's the type of person who comes off as mm -hmm. craven for power. He wants the brass ring. Adam Schiff knows he could never be president of the United States. He probably knows he couldn't even be governor of California, but he could get to the U.S. Senate. Now, that's likely going to happen now. I'm disgusted. And so because he's going to go to the upper chamber, he can now be <laughs> the so de he can now be the Democratic equivalent of Ted Cruz. And he will sit there just as long as Ted Cruz will, because in states like California and Texas, it is almost impossible to get them out. And the amount of money, the amount of effort, you had the perfect Their storm. legacy seats. You had the perfect storm. <laughs> They're bequeathed. You had everything going in your favor to get Beto into that seat over Cruz in, 20, in 2018. But he had... To do that was after the fact. He did that after the fact. Oh, you oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But the fact that they came within three points, couldn't pull it off, 
They, he still ended up losing that race by over a quarter million votes. So that is as close as you're ever going to get. That was everything that needed to come together. And Ted Cruz is just, <laughs> if not more, loathsome than Adam Schiff. So it just goes to show you that at that level, it doesn't matter. They don't care about this two-party thing. They don't believe that the world is ending. They're all in this together. I keep telling you, the end of the day, the image of Pelosi and McConnell bumping yeah. elbows, that's what it's all, that's guys, what it's really all about. You guys, if I ever got into Congress, seriously, like if I were getting, I am bringing you all with me so bad. It's going to be so much fun. We'll have a body cam. We'll, we'll live at large. We'll have fun. No, but it's like, <clears throat> I just think that it's such a theater thing. It's a theater thing. And it's not, we need to do better people. We do. We need to do a lot better. But, you know, it's funny to me. I wonder, like some of these times, like sometimes when I'm watching them in Congress and somebody, people say things, I don't know that I would be able to keep a straight face. Like, I really don't. Like, I don't know that I wouldn't start laughing in someone's face. Let me face. tell you something. And you that's the problem. Say, like, I'm going to lose it. Well, I've already said that if you're able to win, you'll have a you'll yeah. have a specific corner of your office set up specifically for Medea Benjamin. Oh, the code, code pink. pink girls can come Let me hang tell out you, if you guys office. haven't seen the video today of GOP congressman from Tennessee, Mr. Fleischman, who's actually, he's got a Jewish father and a Catholic mother. Uh, he <laughs> went on a berserko rant today in support of what's going on in Gaza. We stand with Israel. We are who done with this Wait, Congressman Fleischman, Fleisch, uh, Fleischman from, he from Tennessee. And so what's with the people up there? What, what they put in the water, the Tennessee is a beautiful state. Oh my God, it been. is. But whatever they're putting in that water, especially in, in their political Holy arena. Oh God, they've got some crazy yeah. people. That there. is a state that was always red, but it wasn't like. Wasn't that the other guy, Ogle or whatever that was? Yeah, that it's, was like, saying, it's like kill them all. Yeah, he's in the, th well, Fleischman's in the third district. Ogle's is in the fifth district. You know, they, they, they float but around and shit. I, like, okay, so let's say I'm sitting somewhere with these people. And somebody makes a comment like that, and I'm near there. I, like, I, I just honestly can't. Like, and, and there is no way that I wouldn't want all of you guys watching this, too. Like, it would be so glorious. And I will tell you guys this. I will share whatever is legally allowed. Sure. Like, whatever would be legally allowed. Um, and, and the truth is because it should all be your place. Every, all of you should be able to go there and it's watch. It's the people's house. That's Absolutely. what it's supposed to be. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.